Hello everyone, Pfun41 here. I have here with me the engine from a 2003 Ford Escape. This is a 3.0 Duratec V6 engine. Now, uh, if you've watched my other videos, you might recognize this engine. This is the one that was pulled out of the uh, Ford Escape that I did the Taurus engine swap in. Now, um, for those of you who haven't seen that video, I'm going to go ahead and cut to a clip and you can hear why this engine is sitting here half torn apart on the stand. Okay, so as you can hear from the clip, this engine wasn't doing so great. It had developed a very bad knock. Um, the computer was also logging misfires on three of the six cylinders. So we went ahead and we dropped a new engine in, it, in its place. Now uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tear it all apart and we're going to find out exactly what went wrong uh, with this engine. Now right now I only have theories on why this engine actually failed. Um, but most of them point towards oil starvation. The uh, owner said that they was going down the road, everything was fine, and then it started making a bunch of noise, a light came on, and they shut it off, and at that point it went to one shop, they told them the engine was blown, they brought it to me, and I basically found the same thing. Um, but when I pulled the pan off of this, the pickup tube was full of metal shards and the pan was full of metal, so obviously there's been a lot of damage done inside this engine. Now this head has already been unbolted. I had to crack this head loose in order to get the engine mount out of the valley here. Um, as you can see, I've already removed the camshafts and all the timing components from the front. I have not, however, taken this head off, so I don't know what it looks like underneath it. Now the first thing we're probably going to do is I'll remove all the timing components from the front here and remove the camshafts. That will allow us to get to the head bolts. We'll take the head bolts out and then we'll pull both of these heads and see how the combustion chambers look. Okay, the heads are off now and we can get our first look at the combustion chambers. I don't know if you can see that, but they actually look very good. I'll come around to the other side. I don't see any issues with any of the uh, cylinders. I looked at all the bores and I rotated the crank and I don't see any issues with them at all. 
And they actually look very good. Okay, I'll get a shot of the heads here. I don't want to flip them all the way over because um, there's nothing to hold the uh, lifters in. But I'll tilt them up and you can see the bottom of them. You can see they actually all look like they're in good shape. Even the spike plugs aren't really bad. I'll get a shot of the other one. See all the cylinders look good. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll take the uh, whole engine block, we'll flip it over, and then uh, we'll start pulling the bottom end apart and see what's going on in there. Okay, the engine's all flipped over now, and we're about to start tearing it apart. See what's going on in here. Okay, so I removed all the pistons from the engine. They're all sitting over here. Now, aside from being kind of dark, and the oil rings being a little bit gummed up, they're actually all in pretty good shape. Um, now, if you notice, these ones are sitting over there on their sides, and these ones are standing straight up. And that's because the wrist pins on these are stuck. They don't really want to move free like they should. And I did find the problem here, and this is the piston that had the problem. You notice it's really stuck. And the problem was this. This is the bearing from it. They're not supposed to look like that. And there's the other piece that was left. That cylinder was right here. The crank actually looks like it's in pretty good shape and the rod end also looks like it's in good shape. But that bearing spun on the crank. Aside from that, from being a bit dirty, all these pistons are in pretty good shape and the engine as a whole is in pretty good shape. So you could probably uh, grind the crank, get some new bearings, put it all back together and you'd be fine. Uh, you could probably get away with just honing the cylinders out too because they aren't worn at all. Now this engine only had 130,000 miles on it and it was in good shape and this kind of failure is typical of oil starvation now these engines they're pretty good engines they'll go for as long as you take care of them there's one thing that will kill them almost instantly and that's loss of oil if you uh if they lose oil pressure even just for a moment it'll spin a bearing almost instantly now as far as why it lost oil pressure it, it was simple lack of oil and there's two reasons for that and this is one of them and this is the breather and PCV valve this little plastic piece is actually the PCV valve now this valve is about eleven dollars on these engines this valve is known to fail in the open position I believe that's what happened on this engine or at least that's one of the things that happened on this engine because the uh, PCV tube was full of oil and what happens is the uh, valve fails in the open position and that causes the engine to start consuming oil not like a ton of oil but it'll start consuming oil and if you're not checking your oil frequently it can actually run the engine out of oil between oil changes now that I think was part of the reason but here's the other thing this engine also had an oil leak and I know that the driver of this car wasn't checking the oil because it, the car came with uh, a bunch of re records on service and one of them was from an oil change place and in the notes section it said there was no oil on the stick so clearly the oil wasn't getting checked on this car 
and it was consuming oil through the PCV valve plus it was leaking oil out and eventually it just ran out of oil and that was the end of it. It's, it's kind of sad really because the car was in really good shape once it was cleaned up and the engine the engine was pretty much spotless and it ran pretty good consider all things considered. Now if you have a Duratec engine like this and you want to avoid a spun bearing or other catastrophic failure what I recommend is that you replace the PCV valve. Now these valves are actually supposed to be changed on a service schedule but a lot of people just simply don't do it. Uh, and there's really no reason not to. You do have to pull the intake manifold but the part itself is only about eleven dollars and that can save you a lot of headache. Other than that just check your oil regularly now as for this engine, I'm going to see if I can find someone who might want to buy it as a core to rebuild because it really wouldn't take much to rebuild this engine but if I can't find someone then it's going to get scrapped um, and I'll try to sell any parts that are still good off of it um, but lessons learned here check your oil, change your PCV valve I'll see you next time